Don't miss our fantastic How to Paint Golds tutorial. What's up Hobby Maniacs, I'm Rob Bear, and today I have a really exciting tutorial. This is uh, kind of like a crowning achievement in my personal hobby arsenal or my hobby diary, so to speak. I've always had problems airbrushing metallic paint, always. Always, always, always in the history of ever. You know, my friend Kenny over at Next Level Painting is always like, yo dog, just, just use Vallejo's, and I'm like, that don't work for me, man. And what, what works for me might not work for you either. And that's just the way it is. But let me tell you what works for me right now is the Army Painter War Paints Gold. There's four different colors. You go up from a copper all the way up to a bright gold. And I actually mix this bad boy in with some shining silver at the very end like you're going to see. And that really, really brings out the pop. Now, this is the same golds we used that you probably saw on our Saint Celestine that we painted up recently on here. Now, I didn't hit you with the gold tutorial because we did that live over on Twitch. And if you're not checking us out on Twitch, head on over <laughs> to twitch.tv forward slash spikybitstv to see all the weekly features. And of course, we have VODs going over there quite frequently during the day and sometimes at night on the weekends, just showcasing all of our past videos as well. Now, we started a new project over there. Uh, it lasted a little long, but we were painting up Vanis Hammer Hands. And lo and behold, Games Workshop re-released this bad boy in June uh, before we could even get our first one painted from our Age of Sigmar starter set. So that was kind of cool. We finished it up right in time the same week as the model actually came out as it was available separately. So that was really neat to see. Now this guy has a ton of gold detail that you can see right here. And you can probably also tell just judging from you know, the non-ridiculous light in here as opposed to the light over the tutorial itself, you can see the gold is shining. Like I can see it in the camera right now. The gold is shining and it, there's less, you know, there's just ambient amount of light in my room here. The, the army, I cannot say enough good things about the army painter golds. These are uh, fantastic paints. They brush well out of the pot. They brush well out of the airbrush. And we're gonna show you how to do both um, airbrushing on this project here. Now this is going to be one of a series of videos on, on painting Mr. Dragon Cat, Mr. Vanis Hammer Hands right here. Uh, we're going to do the skin, we're going to do the golds, we're going to do some of this, this crazy tabard action right here, the scroll work that we did on Celestine 2 but wasn't able to show you because um, I recorded a whole tutorial and the lighting was off. So goes in the trash. It's not good. It's not usable. We're not going to show it to you. I'm not a fan of that. Now, if you're looking to look for the red, how to paint reds tutorial, we have a great tutorial here on the channel right now. It's the Ixion Hail, that Forge World event only custodies model. You can check that one out. That was also using the Army Painter. We used the reds in that one. Now, as opposed to some of the tutorials we've done in the past where we use some of the GW ones like Mephiston and such, I don't know which one's my favorite. I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of torn on both, but I know out of the pot, I definitely personally prefer to use the Army Painter paints. They are a little bit more watery and easier to work with, and that's what I like. I don't like uh, grabbing a bunch of chunky paints and having to you know just kind of work at it to get the paint to work. When it's go time, when I'm putting paint on my palette, I want it to work, and I've never had an issue with Army Painter paints. So they're my go-to right now on the reds, the metals, and I'm actually experimenting right now with some of the normal metals painting up some of my Deathcore Creek. So I'm sure there'll be some tutorials here in the near future on using their normal metals as well, like the silvers and such. And so we'll see, we'll see how those work. But right now I'm very optimistic that they will be just as awesome as these golds right here. So without further ado, thank you for watching. Please make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on this channel here. All right, let's jump right into the tutorial. So step one on the path to golden awesomeness is gonna be true copper, and we're gonna kick it up to greedy gold, bright gold, and then of course, right on top, we're gonna hit it with the silver that's missing. A, <laughs> a shining silver mixed with bright gold that's really gonna pop that gold out at the very top, so we'll be very, very liberal with that one for sure, but for now, we're gonna start with the true copper, which is kind of like a cross between uh, a 
dark gold and actual copper itself. So first off, we're just going to grab our model. Now, normally we would just airbrush this on like we did with Celestine and the Custodes we've been working on, but you might notice that there's a green here, and I always prefer to do organic tones and organic shapes with the airbrush itself and block in everything else. So the hardest part of this project will literally be painting in the gold details on this, but it's a sacrifice that will be easier than doing it the other way and doing the skin not with the airbrush. So we, it seems like we're gonna lose some time here, which this is literally the most time intensive part of the project. But once we get that base coat down, we'll be able to really pop off the details and make that gold work in just three quick steps. But for now, it's gonna be at least an hour or so just getting in here, blocking out this base coat with a nice thin coat here. And you see it's gonna kind of start to coat, but not quite coat. So a lot of this is gonna have to be gone over twice with with our brush or combination of brushes because underneath when we get near the skin we're gonna have to use a thinner brush so it's gonna take a little bit of time a little bit of patience but all that work is gonna pay off so we're gonna knock that all out and come on back and see what the next step's gonna be and just like magic we have finished the base coat you can see we got all of the golden armor and a lot of the saddle detail there, but we left some of the areas that are going to be red, like the reins and that little, I guess it's a cape, whatever that thing is, I don't know. I want to say it's a howdah, but I know, or a saddle, but I don't think that is right. But for now, all we're worrying about is this gold. Let me give it another quick coat right there. So you can see we got a nice solid base coat. So next up, we're going to give this a wash. So now that we got all of our first coat of gold down, we're gonna need to give this bad boy a wash, which is gonna be pretty simple. We're just gonna use some Reichsland Flesh Shade Gloss. The gloss is very important here because if you don't use the gloss, it isn't gonna flow as well over all the cracks and it's also going to mat down and look terrible. So we might have to use two thin coats of this, but at the end of the day, that's okay because we've already spent the bulk of our time on this project just nugging out the gold detail there so for this one I'm actually just gonna grab a small wedge dry brush right here and just dip it into my gloss flesh shade and just kind of go to town start going to town rather all over the miniature here now we may go back and hit these panels with like a blue as an accent color to match the rest of the army but for now I'm gonna go ahead and wash them just to give them that uh, depth and clarification that I would want from all of the gold plating itself just so I can see how it's all gonna work and then the very important to get up here and get in these cracks and some of the trim that is gonna pop those details that we're really 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 gonna want to see now after you're done getting the wash in a whole area here, you're gonna to wanna to go back and make sure that you don't have any Klingons, you don't have any glip glops, things like uh, this right here. Let's zoom in a little bit and show you here. So stuff like this right here is going to get you into trouble. You wanna make sure that anything that's a little too much, like up here in this crack, that's too much. So we're just gonna dab that out right there, get it off our brush. This right here that's all run into that area right there, we're just gonna dab that up as well. Just to keep it from looking terrible after it dries. Now everything else looks to be pretty spread out, pretty thorough here, so I'm gonna be okay with this. I'm gonna put it right in front of my little mini fan that we got and let it crank and start drying out before we go on and finish the rest of this model right here. So I'm 100% sure that that is exactly what I want it to look like. All right, so that has dried now, and you can see that yes, it has given us a lot of good definition in here, but it's not quite where I want it. So here's where we started with the base coat. Here's kind of where we're at, and it is shiny because this is gloss. It is gonna have a little elements of viscosity breaking. I don't know actually what they use, but I'm sure it's 
uh, something that contains some sort of shining element. Perhaps it is a derivative of the Future Flow Wax that I use personally to make a lot of my washes and things. So we're just going to go in and we're going to hit it again with a little bit more. And this stuff is so thin, it doesn't even really matter. And we might even do another thin coat after we get the gold highlights on here as well. Uh, just to bring it out, I'm not exactly sure yet, but I've been experimenting with a lot of that. Now, what you didn't see is I hit these, this plating right here too, and you can tell, it, while it looks good, it can look better. So we're gonna give this another thin coat too, and I grabbed too much, I put way too much on my brush right there, and that's enough to spread out and use on all of this, which we're gonna do. So just spread it out, working it in here. We're gonna turn on the fan again, but I have a strong suspicion that this is exactly where we want to be and we're going to do two thin coats over the rest of the model here in a second when we come back and check on this. So there it is. We've got nice awesome definition in there. You can see all into the plates, all into the grooves in here in the Sigma writing. You can see all that. It's up in the trim. So that is fantastic. That's what we are looking for. You can tell even though it is shiny, you can still see it in the armor plating right here. So we're gonna give the rest of this a wash with the Riesland Flesh Shade Gloss and then come on back and start highlighting it up and you'll really see it start to pop. So here you can see we went in and washed the whole thing. It's a little shiny, but that's okay. The important thing is we got in there, we got all that depth and everything like that. You can see there at Sigmar right and everything we were talking about there and man let me tell you what already this skin is really popping off with this gold now next up in our recipe a little recipe of power here so we started with the true copper again now we're kicking it up to greedy gold then over to bright gold and then we'll be up to a 50 50 mix of that and shining silver now each of these I had a little bit of difficulty mixing these bad boys up so each of these I added in one of those quarter pound ball bearings here. I saw some of the European streamers. I think it was, I think it was Gabe Mesa, I wanna say, put me onto that, which is a great hobby tip there. So you can see, it makes shaking these bad boys up a lot easier. And a lot of the cases, it helps push the paint through the tip right here. But you wanna make sure when you're dabbing this stuff out that you're still wiping the tip off here and keep the tip clean from all the paint drying in that and then clogging that up. So now we're just gonna go in and we're gonna start highlighting. I'll zoom in a little bit here. We're just gonna start highlighting all of these gold areas, but just leaving the darker washes and such in the cracks. Um, but starting to work that gold up uh, slowly over time. Actually, I think I pulled out true copper instead of we pulled out the wrong gold. So we're gonna go get the right gold and start highlighting up all of these areas here. I'll probably come, I'll probably do this area right here so you can see the contrast and then come back and finish it all up. There you can see we've got all the gold, the first layer of gold all touched up in there and started to highlight it up. So now we're just gonna keep continuing on through the rest of the figure and then switch it up to the next level. And there's all the gold, the very first layer done. You can see a nice solid highlight level right there all over all of that majestic gold. Now next up will be, what do we got? Bright gold, bright gold, bright gold, final answer. So there's our bright gold for Army, Army Painter. Fantastic color as well. So this, we're gonna go a little bit closer. Well, not as close. We wanna go closer to the edges to get that to start the detail process down and but we're not going to get too close so kind of what we're going to do here is just go towards the tips we'll keep using keep working this back area right here so we're whoop, too much on our brush that can happen sometimes fortunately this stuff is Pretty easy to work with. My finger racer the crap out of that. It's uh, it's nice and watery, and that's one of the reasons I like it so much, and why I really enjoy airbrushing with it so much as well. All right, so now we got a little bit on our brush here, and we're just going to go in and get a nice solid line down 
that's going to be highlighted with one more color. So we're just going to get in all these areas right here. Just bring it up a notch. Sometimes you have to give it a double tap on the on the color as well, just to make sure that everything is really starting to come into uh, the highlight detail level. And we're going to go across the bottom here. Sometimes you have to reverse your highlights. So along here, we're just going to kind of reverse our highlight as we're going to get lighter as we go out towards the blue. And if we get a little bit on the blue, that's not that big of a deal. Um, it's a little bit hard to hit this angle with you guys and recording it. Normally I'd be able to nail that pretty good. See, we're getting to get right around that lip right there. And then just areas, you know, just arbitrary areas like up tops so here, just to kind of make it started, starting to fade out. And then what that's gonna do is that's gonna leave the very tip top of all of this for the final gold layer, which will apply very sparingly here. So we're just kind of, and I'll do a little in the middle right there just to get it a nice face. So you can already see where that's kind of going. We already got the first step down, so we're gonna finish the rest of it and come on back and take a look. All right, and there, all of the bright gold work is done. You can see it's all in the all in the upper echelons, the very raised edges of all of this right here. And Army Painter is such a great paint, like you can just put it on and it just fades right into the tops here of this flat areas. It's pretty incredible paint. It's almost it's a little it's got a little bit of transparency to it, which is super nice. Now, next step is gonna be taking that same bright gold and we're gonna mix a little shining silver in here with it to kind of produce here, let me show you. We're gonna kind of show you, It's we're gonna blend it 50-50. Now, I don't work for any of these companies. I'm not Games Workshop. I'm not gonna purposely not mix paints when it, when it definitely behooves me. But here is how this is gonna look. So it's a nice shining gold that's almost steel. It's almost steel, but it's not quite steel. Like if you compared a, a metal to this, it would not be right there and here. We'll just show you as we lock it into right here on some of this detail in the back. What's really nice about this is it's very easy to you're just gonna go in and just go perpendicular over as many areas as you can. If you have to do a little bit of line highlight work, it's no big deal. So we're just literally just gonna go perpendicular right over the top right here. Actually, I don't even think I got enough on my, there we go. So again, perpendicular right over the top and you can see that very fine line of light gold right on the top there. That's really going to bring all of this detail work right out once we go through and work all of these. Remember right here we did this reverse edge. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to hit. I'm going to probably get a little bit on the blue, but hey, that's what cleanup's for. Right there on that, that, fine, that fine line right there on that edge, and that's going to pop it out. So we're just going to go through and hit the very fine edges all of the upper trim work on all of this area right here and that should produce the level of contrast we want to really make this gold just pop and here it is all the gold finished up on all of the armor plates just the very tops the very highlighted edges right there but you can see it looks fantastic army painters got some really great looking golds that are just amazing once you put them down in the right order with a little bit of wash you can really make some ridiculous looking realistic metals on pretty much any surface area there so that's pretty much it for this one on how to use the new four step army painter gold paints that they just put out i am a, i'm a fan they airbrush great they paint on great i cannot say enough good things about these new colors from army painter so if you like our features here on youtube make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to be the very first to like or comment on our features here and head on over to the longwar.net that's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content early access videos and more Become a veteran of the long war today.